This lecture covers the vinyl family of polymers for uh, thermoplastic resins. And to apologize in advance for the weird photos under these families, I was doing these lectures, or making up these lectures, uh, well, at the very beginning of my career, and I was pulling a lot of late nights, and for some reason I thought this was a good idea to visit awkward family photos because I was talking about polymer families. Um, I'm a geek. I don't pretend not to be anything other than a geek, and so this is how it manifests itself uh, in strange ways. So you're going to see a lot of these pictures. If you wonder what the heck I was doing, I, I don't know. I was tired. So moving on. These are the polymers that are part of the vinyl family, the big one being polyvinyl chloride or PVC. Polyacetate, PVA, and polyvanillidine dichloride are also part of the vinyl, uh, vinyl polymers family in terms of their commercial use. PVC has a distinct market advantage because it is one of the least expensive of the four major commodity thermoplastics, those being polyethylene, polypropylene, polyvinyl chloride, and polystyrene to produce. And so for that reason, there's a marketing advantage. Uh, this is mainly due to the composition of PVC, and the energy requirements for making PVC are uh, very low. Uh, the raw material for PVC is crude oil, it's been converted into ethylene, and then salt. Regular old table salt, sodium chloride, is then converted into chlorine. Both of these two things, ethylene is used for making polyethylene, and sodium chloride uh, is rather ubiquitous, so they start off with really, really inexpensive starting materials. The final composition of the mixture is 43% uh, ethylene and 57% chlorine. So these are the energy requirements uh, for making these various polymers. Polystyrene, or PS, is the most energy intensive, where PVC is very low, is the least of the four major commodity polymers, and that's where the marketing advantage comes from. PVC is primarily made by suspension polymerization. I talked uh, in previous lectures about how bulk polymerization is super easy and uh, very low contamination, but there are other challenges about that, and when it comes to PVC, uh, this is one of those things where you really need to keep the polymerization system properly cooled. You're starting with vinyl chloride monomer, which has the tendency to decompose, and when it decomposes, it creates chlorine gas. So that is something you don't want to decompose during your polymerization. Chlorine gas is a poison. In the suspension polymerization, you have water as the carrier medium, and you use uh, typical stabilizers as suspending agents. Uh, polyvinyl alcohol is often used, and then sometimes cellulose ether. Vol vinyl chloride monomer is your monomer, and this typically uses an organosoluble initiator. Your product, of course, is PVC polymer. PVC has a high TG, uh, well above room temperature at 80, 82 to 87. Its melting point is 200 to 212. So PVC is rigid and glassy at room temperature. And you really do need plasticizers to reduce the TG of PVC to make it flexible. However, PVC is one of those things where plasticization is its best asset. PVC, unlike the previous polyolefins we were talking about, has low crystallinity. This is 10 to 15 percent. These chlorine atoms occur irregularly on the chain, and so you get atactic structure. And as we talked about previously, atactic structure doesn't lend itself to being crystalline. PVC is very uh, chemically resistant uh, to fats, oils, and acids. It has good electrical insulating properties, and it has low moisture absorptivity. The unique thing about PVC is that it, can, it is inherently resistant to fungus or algae growth. This can also be solvent welded. Because it has low crystallinity, uh, it can very easily be solvent welded. And if you've ever had the joy of working on PVC uh, pipe, uh, the solvent that you use is this purple stuff. It really just dissolves the top surface of the PVC pipes that you're sticking together so that when you stick them back together and the solvent evaporates, the molecules uh, re-solidify into one solid PVC pipe if you're lucky. Um, PVC itself is also flame resistant. It is self-extinguishing, meaning if you put a, f a flame up to this thing, it won't, start, it won't start on fire, and in fact it will actually put itself out. This again is very different than your polyolefins. So here's uh, a chart of fire spread properties. 
Here you have a thickness of the material, so this is 4 millimeters, and the fire spreading index of 10. If we're looking at polystyrene, uh, we're looking at a thickness of 2 millimeters, and this, the fire spreading index is 355. So this gives you an idea of the um, differences in other commodity plastics versus polyvinyl chloride. Uh, if you have chlorinated PVC or CPVC, you'll have even lower fire spreading index. Like I talked about with the flame retardants, if you have halogens on them, they are flame retardant, and PVC inherently has halogens, chlorine, on the backbone. So that makes it uh, flame resistant. Even flame retardant polystyrene is significantly higher. So uh, one thing to point out, here is polyvinyl chloride, here is wood. So uh, this, of course, will burn, PVC will not. Some of the problems associated with PVC is that PVC has very poor heat resistance. This is why suspension polymerization is the polymerization of choice. Once you've polymerized PVC, if you get it too hot, it will um, start to unzip and you'll get things like chain scission events, dehydrochlorination. That's a fancy word for it creates hydrochloric acid gas when it breaks down, which is bad. Um, it can also crosslink. We don't want crosslinking in thermoplastics. That makes them not thermoplastic. In other words, you can't melt them, harden them, and then remelt them again. So that's a problem. Also, they can oxidize. Poor heat resistance is a problem. Uh, your PVC's softening point is 80 degrees Celsius. If you go too far above that, uh, then you start to get decomposition and hydrochloric acid gas evolution. Uh, it's the incineration of PVC in uh, uh, fire that uh, is associated with dioxin formation. Now, you have to get really, really hot to burn PVC, but when it does burn, it can form dioxin, which is a toxic gas. So PVC has to incorporate heat stabilizers, uh, lubricants, and plasticizers to keep that from being an issue. Typically, your heat stabilizers are barium, zinc, and cadmium carboxylates. PVC is also susceptible to UV. Uh, this changes from clear to yellow or brown. So if you, ha if you have something that's pigmented white, it will get a yellowish cast to it. Uh, UV stabilizers like titanium dioxide or carbon black are often used to reduce that susceptibility to UV. Anything with uh, chloride in it will also turn brown. One of the biggest advantages of PVC is its ability to be plasticized. And here is a list of some potential plasticizers. These are the, known as the phthalate plasticizers. Uh, there's also properties uh, that can be gained at low temperature from using different plasticizers, and these are the ones that are based on vegetable oils, so dioctyl adipate, dibutyl sebicate, and dioctyl sebicate as well can be used. There are non-phthalate plasticizers. One of the problems with the phthalate plasticizers is that they have been banned in the European Union. And the way that environmental regulation tends to happen is the European Union, in other words, most of the major countries in Europe, will ban something or regulate something. California in the United States will then regulate it, and then the rest of the United States regulations will follow. So when plasticizers uh, started to fall in the European Union in, in January of 2006, uh, by August of 2006, the U.S. banned the use of phthalates in a wide variety of toys and child care products. So a lot of these phthalates really can't be used in things that children can put in their mouths anymore because they have the ability to migrate out of the material and be swallowed. These plasticizers are physically mixed in to the PVC formulation. That means it's not chemically bound, it's just physically mixed in, and then it can migrate out of the material and then into the body. The problem is, in a human body, it is fat soluble. In other words, it will build up in your body until it reaches toxic levels, and then can start to have negative health effects. When it comes to U.S. production of PVC, there are three main processing methods. Uh, suspension polymerization consists of 80% of all of the polymerization. Emulsion does about 12%, and then bulk polymerization does about 8 So you're looking about 92% uh, in uh, types of polymerization that have a lot of water to dissipate any heat of polymerization. PVC material selection depends on molecular weight, like most uh, thermoplastics, but also morphology, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. PVC uh, does have some molecular weight distri distribution effect, uh, but it's not as dramatic as in the polyolefins. Um, it has a marginal effect on processing and performance. Typically, uh, PVC exhibits molecular weight distributions between 2 and 4. The thing about the uh, PVC 
uh, refers to this sort of uh, k value. Uh, and this is related to viscosity number, uh, molecular weight distribution, or reduced viscosity. And this gives you an average degree of polymerization. PVC's main claim to fame is its ability to be plasticized. And be that, the reason for that is because PVC itself, in the particles it forms, is very porous. And inside of those pores is the capacity to absorb plasticizer uh, better or worse than other grades of PVC. And when it comes to PVC, the bulk density and the porosity are very related. Uh, so you take a look at mean particle size and also particle size distribution when you're looking at the morphology of PVC and these pores. So parameters for PVC are often reported in, uh, with a K. So when you're looking at flexible resins, this is K70. The porosity of the resin is greater than 30, and it has a lower density, apparent density. Uh, as you get more rigid, you uh, start to see K values drop. Your porosity also drops to about 20%, and your, your density increases. When it comes to PVC resins for bottles, your K tends to run between 57 and 60. Your porosity tends to be even lower, uh, can be around 18%, and you have a moderate density of the uh, PVC. PVC is most typically used in long-term applications. 50 to 60% goes into the building industry, so not a lot in consumer packaging. For processing temperature, you're looking at 160 to 210 degrees Celsius, uh, and plasticizers are ubiquitously used to make the rigid PVC more flexible. Typically, the PVC has high molecular weight to give you better physical properties in the end result. I mean, after all, if it's used in the building industry, it has to have some sort of structural integrity, but this makes it more difficult to process. Here is a representative PVC formulation. Uh, so here are different uh, types of PVC. You have PVC, you have a tin stabilizer, uh, a complex carbohydrate, calcium stearate, and then other uh, materials. And this is the function listed here. So PVC, of course, is our base resin. When we're looking at the tin stabilizer or the complex uh, carboxylate, that's also a heat stabilizer. Uh, you'll see that those are present in, both in uh, one or the other is present in all the formulations. You can also see use of a processing aid of calcium stearate as a lubricant. Uh, in the other formulations you see fatty acids. These are calcium stearate is also based on a fatty acid. Paraffin wax is sometimes added. Plasticizer is included in different levels. In this case it's a phthalate plasticizer but this is to enhance flexibility. Calcium carbonate is to give it a little bit of st stiffness and strength and can also be used as a colorant. Titanium dioxide in this case is used as a UV light stabilizer, but it can also be used as a colorant. And then azo dicarboamide is used as a chemical foaming agent. So the different formulations, uh, PVC1 is an outer layer of a co-extruded water hose, PVC2 is a clear inner layer of the water hose, and then uh, PVC3 is a PVC foam, which is why you see a chemical foaming agent used there. PVC is used in plastisols, and a plastisol is the product of a fusion of a PVC resin in a plasticizer, and is one of its biggest assets. PVC's biggest asset is its affinity for plasticizers. And what you can do with a plastisol is you add in these plasticizers with the PVC, and this forms a liquid. Liquid enough that you can dip an entire picnic table into it and coat an entire picnic table in PVC. So uh, the fusion and the processing, in this case I re reported this as uh, degrees Fahrenheit, but this is often done at 325 to 350. So for your uh, plastisol formulation, you'll have PVC in 100, in 100 parts, so two parts PVC to one part plasticizer, and other additives uh, added here. These are cured by heating. In other words, uh, the film on the picnic table in this case is, uh, the solvent is removed and it becomes a solid coating. Uh, this is another application for PVC, a static-free conductive vinyl flooring. Uh, often used in kind of industrial applications, not really used in the household. PVC can be processed by a wide variety of thermoplastic processing methods, extrusion, calendaring, injection molding, rotational molding, spray coating, and dip coating. Uh, when you're looking at these, other thermoplastics do this, but this is where PVC really shines uh, because of the use of plastisols. For PVC, these are typically used in single screw extrusion, uh, film and sheet for food wrap, uh, tubing for garden hoses, and then cellular profiles like door linings, refrigerator gaskets, and then insulation for electrical wires. Also pipes and fittings. Uh, 
for any type of uh, pipe. Soil and drainage is one of those uh, drain pipes for, for homes. So here you see some flexible uh, PVC tubing. Uh, also you can make heat shrinkable tubing from this and then uh, tubing and wire insulation as well. Calendaring uh, requires a higher equipment cost and we don't do calendaring in uh, our department. Uh, but calendaring uh, is most suitable for high volume production of film and sheet for things like vinyl upholstery, pool linings and floorings, uh, shower curtains, tablecloth, and rainwear. So a lot of the, your, your typical thing is your PVC shower curtain uh, in, for this particular type of processing. PVC of course can be injection molded. It gives a highly finished and detailed PVC product, uh, things for shoe soles, appliance wire plugs, automotive parts, things like armrests and vinyl upholstery. There are a variety of common copolymers for PVC, uh, and uh, vinyl acetate is one of those. This can be used for making a copolymer, uh, co uh, co sorry, a copolymer used for making floor tiles because they have good abrasion resistance. Also, coatings for luggage, uh, high-quality phonograph records. So, when you're talking about vinyl records, this is a copolymer of vinyl chloride monomer and vinyl acetate. And uh, when I ma made this, uh, vinyl records weren't. Uh, being used so much, but we can all thank the hipsters for bringing vinyl back into the mainstream and giving my father someone to sell his entire vinyl record collection to. Another common uh, copolymer is vinyl chloride monomer with vanillidine chloride. Uh, polyvanillidine chloride has higher crystallinity than PVC and that makes it stronger. It also has uh, better resistance to water absorption and it has better resistance to chemical attack when compared to PVC. So uh, vinyl chloride, vinyl, uh, uh, vi vanillidine chloride copolymers is mainly used in making films. In fact, if you have 25% vinyl chloride monomer and, sorry, 25% polyvanillidine chloride and 75% vinyl chloride, that is your saran wrap, your plastic food wrap. Other uses of this copolymer include valves, car seat, uh, cover, car seat covers, and upholstery and brushes. So the the, the uh, ones that are not natural hair bristles, those are, um, uh, vinyl chloride monomer, van vanillidine chloride copolymers. Chlorinated PVC is uh, chlorine that has been, the PVC that has been treated with extra chlorine, uh, and this has improved heat resistance compared to polyvinyl chloride. When I was in college, I worked in a hardware store, and uh, numerous times I had discussions with people who were doing uh, plumbing projects, and uh, CPVC, uh, or chlorinated polyvinyl chloride, is used in hot water piping. It's stronger and has improved heat resistance. Now polyvinyl chloride piping uh, does not have that heat resistance, but it's less expensive. So on numerous occasions, people would buy the less expensive PVC, say that they're using it in hot water piping. I would tell them they need to go back and get CPVC. They wouldn't listen to me. Then they would come back and purchase their CPVC after their PVC uh, that they used in hot water piping failed. So if you ever have the joy of doing DIY plumbing in your home and you need a, a product for hot water piping and you're choosing a vinyl product, CPVC is the way to go. These are the structures of the monomers. This is the one vinyl chloride monomer that's used for making uh, PVC. This is vanillidine chloride. The big difference here is this has one chlorine, this has two. So this hydrogen here has been replaced with chlorine. This is vinyl acetate monomer and then chlorine gas when you're uh, reacting it with vanillidine chloride is considered a monomer in this case. Here are your uh, copolymer synthesis uh, reaction schemes. So this is your polyvinyl chloride synthesis. Vinyl chloride monomer polymerized to make polyvinyl chloride polymer. Once again, brackets and an N means polymer, poly, something. Here you have the uh, co-monomers. So polyvinyl acetate co-vinyl chloride. This is often just referred to as polyvinyl acetate. But this produces this particular polymer structure. Here we have vanillidine chloride and vinyl chloride reacted together to give you saran wrap or polyvanillidine co-vinyl chloride synthesis. And then CPVC is simply uh, vinyl chloride monomer in the presence of chlorine gas to give you chlorinated PVC. There are some formulations that are changing. One of these is ultra high molecular weight PVC, simply polymerizing it to its very, very high uh, molecular weight. 
Also, they are using uh, 120 parts per hundred resin plasticizer. This makes the PVC elastomeric and this can create kink resistant tubing. This is very advantageous for things like garden hoses and which is rated up to 105 Celsius. So it can be used in hot water. Also Crosslink CV PVC, this provides a fine sandpaper like surface that gives traction. Uh, there's also graft PVC. These are plasticizer free applications. Uh, you have vinyl chloride monomer with an EVA graft that gives you a, pla a plasticized-like formulation without the plasticizer that can migrate out of the uh, resin. They've also do done some of these graft resins with polyvinyl chloride monomer and uh, polyurethanes. Also, they will blend or alloy PVC with other things. PVC with rubber, PVC with ABS. PVC with rubber would give you a more elastomeric uh, material. Uh, PVC with ABS would give you a more rigid material. One thing to note is if you're ever going to work with PVC, there is acroosteolysis, and this is uh, exposure to vinyl chloride monomer. That's, how it, that's what causes it. Uh, it's not very nice. It causes ulcers on the palms and hands and the soles of the feet. That is why, uh, because of this disease, there is a 1 to 5 parts per million exposure limit of vinyl chloride monomer. Now, this is vinyl chloride monomer, not PVC. So if you are in a polymerization plant where they are making polyvinyl chloride from vinyl chloride monomer, this is something to definitely uh, keep on your radar. However, if you're using uh, PVC in something like blending or fabrica fabrication, you're much less likely to be produced a vinyl chloride monomer, uh, so it's not as much of a concern. And if you're using something that's wrapped or contained in PVC, again, your reduction goes down even further. Uh, PVC products are used in medical applications, and so there are concerns about uh, vinyl chloride monomer, but also the leaching of plasticizer in things like blood bags or hemodialysis. And also, if you happen to live close to a PVC plant, especially one where they're polymerizing PVC, uh, you should um, mitigate your exposure to anything that might happen. This concludes the uh, PVC or vinyl family uh, lecture. I will see you back here for the Styrenics lecture.